Tardigrades, also known as moss piglets or water bears, are quite popular these days. If you have ever wondered what a tardigrade is made of and what is inside of it, you have come to the right place. In this video, I would love to show you the inner workings of a living tardigrade. Let's dive right into it. Tardigrades have eight legs. A head, a midsection, and a rear. The tardigrade is covered in a leathery outer skin layer, called the cuticle. This hide consists mostly of chitin and has a rough surface, yet it can be transparent. It is sturdy but flexible, yet doesn't grow with the tardigrade. Tardigrades have to shed their skin like a lizard or insect if they want to grow in a process called molting. The cuticle is not a barrier. Water and other substances can freely go through. Oxygen passes directly from the surrounding water into the tardigrade system. Since they have no lungs or heart, tardigrades have to rely on direct oxygen absorption. The oxygen dissolves directly into the liquid filling out their body cavity, the so-called hemolymph, which is the analog to blood. The movement of the cuticle during locomotion causes the hemolymph to be squeezed around within the body cavity, creating basic circulation, distributing the oxygen to all organs present. One might say the cuticle is the tardigrade's lungs and heart in one package. The only cells present in the hemolymph are storage cells, coelomocytes. Can you see these balls floating around inside of the tardi? These cells are basically like our fat cells. They store nutrients like lipids and glycogen. Their number and shape helps to determine the health status of the tardigrade. Are they plump, round and numerous? The tardi is very healthy and well nourished. Are they very few in number and crumpled? Tardi is starving. Let's focus on the head next. Can you see this round structure with this bow and arrow shape attached to it? The round part is the sucking pharynx, the so-called pharyngeal bulb. The tardigrade uses this giant muscle structure to suck in food through the mouth opening and the buccal tube. This is the buccal tube. The pharynx splits this buccal tube into three separate channels acting as valves, before reuniting into the esophagus. This tripartite structure serves to increase suction and allows the tardigrade to chew food. Can you see these dash-like structures lining the individual channels? They are macroplacoids, calcified structures that are used for mastication. You can think of them as specialized versions of teeth. The alignment and structure of the placoids is used to distinguish tardigrade species apart from each other. They are like a fingerprint. Oh, and speaking of teeth, the bow and arrow shaped part in front of the pharynx is another specialized set of teeth. They are called stylets and they are used to pierce prey. The stylets are also made from calcium carbonate, limestone. Muscles let the stylets shoot forward so that their tips protrude slightly out of the mouth opening. Where the pointy ends of the stylets can do their deadly work. The stylet is actuated by muscles. These muscles are counteracted by the stylet support. This part is spring-loaded and pulls the stylets back, locking them in resting position within the stylet sheaths. The stylets are comparable to incisors or fangs, while the macroplacoids are comparable to molar teeth. Beside the pharynx you can see the massive salivary glands, they are connected to the buccal tube and secrete a cocktail of digestive enzymes. Besides pre-digesting the food, the salivary glands have another important role. During molting, the stylets are shed completely, together with the cuticle. And they have to regrow. The salivary glands rebuild the stylets from scratch during each molt. The esophagus brings the swallowed and masticated food to the stomach. 
The stomach can be sectioned into two regions, midgut, where the digestion will extract useful nutrients, and the hindgut. The hindgut is flanked by the so-called Malpighian tubes. They are very simple versions of kidneys, secreting proteurine directly into the hindgut. The secreted proteurine causes crystals to form within the stomach. Finally, the hindgut ends in a cloaca. A cloaca is the posterior orifice that serves as the only opening for both the digestive and the reproductive tracts. Connected to the cloaca, you find the gonads. Depending on the sex of the tardigrade, there is either an ovary or testis. But tardigrade sex is very complex. There are asexual species, hermaphrodite species, etc. In our case, an ovary is present, with eggs of different levels of maturity. The ovary is connected to the end section of the hindgut through an oviduct, where it ends finally in the cloaca. Back to the head. The tardigrade's brain is a three-lobed, banana-shaped structure, located in front of the pharynx, wrapping around the buccal tube. The mouth opening and the buccal tube are lined with sensory cells connected directly to the brain, allowing the tardigrade to taste and smell. The eyes mark the outer lobes of the brain. The tardigrade's eyes are positioned directly within the brain. These eyes do not seem to have contact to the body wall at all, and lack a lens. The eyes are composed of a single pigment cup cell. This is the part of the eye we can see here. Just underneath is a microvillous cell and one or more modified ciliary cells gathering information for the brain. The pigments block some of the light from entering, allowing the tardigrade to determine the angle of incident light rays. The tardigrade can determine if it is currently dark or bright, and it can tell if it is moving towards or away from the light source. Can you see the structure here? This is the first ventral ganglion, a nexus of nerve cells. The tardigrade's brain is directly connected to the ventral and dorsal ganglia sets. The first ganglia set is in the head part, while the other four are located between each pair of legs. The ganglia transport signals through nerve strands to the individual muscle cells. Tardigrade muscle fibers are unicellular. Here you can see the nucleus and some other organelles. It's a bit hard to see, but that's all a light microscope can do. To see more, we would need an electron microscope. Tardigrade muscle cells attach directly to the cuticle for stability. They stretch through the entire tardigrade body in a crisscross fashion. Lastly, let's take a look at the claws and legs. The claws are an extension of the cuticle. They are much sturdier and lack flexibility. Claws are species dependent and can be used also as a tool for identification. Can you see this drop-shaped organ in the leg? This is a special claw gland that will remake the hardened claw structure from scratch. In each leg there are just a few muscle strands actuating the movement. The muscle cells have no antagonist. The only force counteracting muscle contraction is the internal pressure of the body cavity, pushing the contracted leg back out. Simple is best. I hope you liked this short excursion into the anatomy of these fascinating creatures. Please let me know what you want to see next. Let's dig up some more dirt and let's stay curious.